audience, my name is Sasha Yazbets and this is a course on stakeholder mobilization for successful structural reforms. Wide support and coordinated actions across the society and government are key factors of success of the structural reforms. Support is best achieved through regular and meaningful coordination and discussion with stakeholders at all levels of reforms. We will be joined with, by Mr. Tilen Božić, who has had the privilege of being in charge of a few structural reforms in Slovenia in recent years. So, to begin, structural reforms are not there just for the sake of being there. They are meant to improve public service efficiency or availability, or to improve business environment, or perhaps to, um, to um, in enable public finance sustainability. I worked at different levels at the Ministry of Finance, and therefore designing, costing, and selling of structural reforms to different audiences has, be has been a constant part of my job. So, from my personal experience, the preconditions for successful uh, structural reforms are the following. Number one is the ownership. Ownership means that we do not think that whatever we are doing in the reform sense is because of some international organization is telling us what to do. The ownership means that we do believe that what we are doing with this reform is good for our country, that this is what our country needs, either to improve the public service availability or to improve the business environment for the firms or to enable long-term public finance sustainability. Number two is the big picture approach, which means a clear identification of what we are doing, this is, this is needed. So first, we should know what the current state of the affairs is. Second, we have to tell what we are doing, what we are changing with the reform. And uh, three is that uh, we need to know what the target state is. So we should use simple and clear language for everybody to understand what we are doing with the reform. We should avoid the situation where the big picture is lost in too many details or where the meaning is lost in high-flying words. So the big picture approach. Number three is the parallel work of all levels of government up to the every official in nine ministries. I think this is very straightforward and needs no further explanation. Number four is strong support of Prime Minister's office and strong will of Ministry of Finance. Because structural reforms sometimes take away some of the pre-acquired rights for some groups, and sometimes people just oppose changes. Uh, and that's why it is really important that the structural reforms have a strong support from the Prime Minister's office. And because uh, uh, MO, Ministry of Finance is usually the ministry which is in charge of these reforms, so they need to have strong will to uh, actually implement them. Number five, timing matters. In theory, structural reforms should be done in good economic times. However, in practice, more often, they are initiated or sped up during less favorable economic times. So, frankly speaking, Corona has forced us into a new set of structural reforms to make our economies more uh, resilient and more sustainable. And uh, number six, uh, last but not least, um, what is important uh, for the structural reform most is the public acceptance. Um, we are all affected by the structural reforms, so uh, the implementation of them will impact every day of people and businesses. So we are all the ultimate stakeholders in structural reforms, but can be divided in various groups. So number one, it's the experts and the academia. So they will be the ones who will be looking for expert solutions to the uh, reforms that need to be undertaken uh, according to some scientific arguments, according to, numer to numerical calculations or to model predictions. Number two, 
is the government and members of parliament, so the politicians. They will be on one side the proponents of the reform, they will be the decision makers, they will be following their political agenda, by, but simultaneously, hopefully, pursuing the best for the country and its people. The third group of stakeholders is the media, the reporters, so they will be the messengers. They will be trying to convey the underlying and the essence of the novelties of the reform. And um, number four, it's the group of social partners, trade unions, non-government uh, organizations, and the general public. So the ones that are really affected by the measures taken. So depending on the sub-area of the measure of the reform, various interesting groups of public are mobilized. We'll have different uh, stakeholders when we, when we are reforming, for example, the uh, irrigation of the farmland, uh, as we will when we are reforming the labor market or the, the fiscal cadaster. So um, the government decisions and adopted laws, they affect our lives. However, not all of us share common priorities and views, and different groups oftentimes have opposing goals. So, uh, for example, you will have environmental organizations. They want as much of land to be protected as natural habitat, whereas uh, the farming, the, the, the infrastructure, the industry, uh, they do not. They, do have, they, have different, uh, they have different goals. So, who do we mobilize? What is the right time to mobilize them? Um, Tilan, welcome. <laughs> uh, you have had the privilege, as I said, of playing many of these before mentioned roles of stakeholders. So, uh, we are all the general public, but on top of that, you were also a member of parliament, uh, so a decision maker, and you were also the state secretary at two different ministries. So, you really had the, the uh, possibility uh, to, to design and to, to negotiate and to amend and implement the, the mass valuation of real estate in Slovenia, and then for the whole story regarding the, the, the process of pension reform. So, you are super experienced. <laughs> uh, tell us, what is the, the value added of stakeholder mobilization and inclusion in, in, different, um, in different stages of policy design and implementation? Well, thank you, Sasha, for the introduction. Uh, first, I have to say that uh, I think that uh, without the broad range of, range of stakeholders, actually a structural reform uh, will not be successful. Uh, definitely, if you would have even a strong government and even a strong majority in the parliament, uh, if you would push forward a good structural reform, uh, this would definitely become a very strong topic uh, among the politicians, the media, the public, and if they would not understand it and embrace it and support it, it is highly likely that just by the next elections, the structural reform would be reversed. Because just of not involving them, not explaining, not actually having this broad support. I think that uh, also in all stages, uh, so from design, to then to the negotiation phase, to the implementation phase, uh, stakeholders have very important roles. Of course, uh, we are always um, short of resources, for example, of brain power. Uh, you need academia, smart people to help you out with the calculations, with uh, designing some models and so on, so on, because if not, this would take too much time and of course also the, the measures or the solutions that you would prepare would not be so good. In addition, of course, there are some, uh, for example, the unions, the employers, uh, there is also the media and so on, who help you actually through their understanding of the, of the various issues that you have and understanding the facts and the background behind it, uh, that they feel that what you are doing is right. And if they feel that, 
Well, it will just happen that uh, you will have the inertia which is needed so that the, you don't stop halfway because of other priorities, which you know in politics uh, a year is uh, like uh, 100 years because, uh, of course, priorities change from day to day and you need to stay on the table. On top, if you have a strategic uh, view over it, you must be in the top 10 uh, priorities of the government all the time and you have to nurture that to be there uh, and as said uh, what helps here is also that you have much better control when it comes to the legislative phase because basically when somebody would start with some false claims or with something would, which would harm the structural reform uh, actually various stakeholders would raise their head and say okay no we have thought about that uh, they have provided some good evidence that what they are doing is right. So let's do it in order to solve this issue in a way which they said it would solve the issue. So basically, uh, then this becomes kind of an organism which helps you uh, to press this uh, structural reform forward and also to protect it or advocate it uh, for it uh, in order not to get too much damage during this process. Okay, great. Thank you, Tilen. It's good to have them on board. I think we agree. But how do you actually, how do you identify the stakeholders for the reform in the first place? Well, there are different ways how to do it. How we did it uh, was actually that uh, we took a piece of paper and just wrote down the whole process of this structural reform. So which are the steps that we have to go through uh, in order to get to the goal, so the adoption and good implementation. And through these steps, you actually think of who would you need in order to make this step as good as possible. At, in the beginning, you need, let's say, academia. You need people who have a lot of knowledge, very good memory of what happened in the past 20, 30 years to actually help you to cover your, I would say, handicaps. Because you don't know it all, your team doesn't know it all, and you need this broader knowledge, broader understanding uh, to make uh, things right. So, and you do that in the beginning. So when you are setting the stage, that is when you have to identify all the stakeholders, which you think you will need. And it's not just by saying, okay, I need academia, that's it. No, you have to say, okay, I need academia, we are doing a uh, pension reform, so who do you know in this field that has very good expertise? In Slovenia, that would be like five people, and you have to write two or three names down. So who will you call, who will you ask? And then do this for each and every stakeholder that you have, because you have to understand that basically you have your narrow team, and I see the stakeholders as a broad team, and this team has actually to work together and uh, actually being able to uh, help you and provide some leverage in getting, getting the job done. Okay. So it's really like they taught us at school. It's a big project. You, you write it down, you write the phases, you write the dates, you write the, the, the stakeholders. That's great. But how do you actually attract them? How do you mobilize them? Not everybody is in favor of what you are about to do. Yes, of course. I mean, uh, but there is already some help, I would say. So the, the first step is done uh, without uh, you doing anything. Because, you know, structural reforms tend to attract a lot of attention. So the media would like to see what's going on. The general public would be interested. Then also the politicians. It is highly likely that they were discussing it before the, during the election uh, period and also afterwards when drafting the coalition contract. So actually the attention is already there. So, and the expectations are already there. So what you have to do at that point is actually understand uh, what, which uh, stakeholders you need. This is one. And second, what actually drives them. Because some are, I would say, mandatory. Uh, they have to do their job from the other ministries. Well, they are there, they are employed, and they have to do it. Then there is, uh, for example, the social partners. We have a very detail detailed, uh, I would say, rules on how to engage uh, and what is their role there. 
And there is a lot of others, which uh, I would say are optional, but if you don't uh, take them on board, you will suffer later on. Uh, it goes for the academia, it goes for the opposition, not just the position. Uh, it goes for many, many uh, others, also interest groups, uh, which would like to see what you are doing and understand what you are doing. So uh, then you usually, uh, when you try to understand what they need, you look uh, what is their driver. So are, is there just genuine interest? Okay, that's fine. Then it could be also that uh, they would like to have some popularity because this would help their, I don't know, maybe uh, they have membership and they have to actually be shown also on TV, in the general public and so on uh, as progressive and as people who are doers so that others will follow and that their, I would say, uh, base will grow up. And then there are also the ones who uh, would need probably some money and so on. And uh, here you have to be uh, really careful how you approach them uh, in order to mobilize them and also, I would say, in order not to insult them. Because if you say a wrong team, thing to somebody, well, of course, uh, you have already made the first mistake in engaging with stakeholders, which can, uh, well, I would say, harm you down the road later on where, when you are working with him. Okay, great. So with all these, you know, experience that you have gained during this, this process, what are some of your most valuable lessons learned, you know, the ones that cannot be read in the, in the textbooks? What are some mistakes that can be avoided uh, if you know things in advance? Well, the first thing I, what is not in the books is uh, how do you know uh, that you are doing it right? because uh, it's uh, usually just a feeling that you are doing it right. But uh, this feeling, when you start to decompose it, you then understand that uh, it has many different aspects. So uh, usually what would happen if you are doing it right is that uh, people or the stakeholders will, will, will take ownership of this structural reform. They will become enthusiastic. They will start asking questions questions, sharing knowledge, uh, giving uh, additional proposals and just enjoying uh, uh, all the way uh, that they are doing something which is uh, important and that in the end will be shown somewhere so that there will be a result uh, out of it. So uh, this is one. The second, uh, of course, uh, they start to get some kind of uh, let's do it attitude. And that goes for the other stakeholders, so for the external, and also for your team. So that it's, I don't know, it's uh, nearly midnight. And then you say, okay, tomorrow we have to press this forward. And they said, well, 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 let's go back to the office. I'll drop, uh, I will take something to eat, and let's do it today. It's actually tomorrow because it's after night, uh, midnight, but you actually do it. And uh, for my team, I can say that uh, they were always ready to go uh, the extra mile. So enthusiastic, let's do it, and let's do it now. Because tomorrow, well, we'll do something else tomorrow. So that's, that's the attitude which, which I really enjoyed. Um, and, and that showed me, okay, that we are on the right track. Then another thing which is very important, that uh, actually the stakeholders become kind of uh, resilient to false claims. So basically, you, uh, when they're engaging, not just with you, but they go to the radio, say something, they uh, talk to their members, they talk to various, very, various audience, audiences, and then uh, somebody says something and they say, no, 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 wait. You said this, but we have proof, it's calculated and it's, it has, uh, it has, there is hard the evidence that you are wrong and that we are right. And uh, this actually gives uh, to everybody some, I would say, confidence and feeling which actually is then uh, kind of spreading around. Because then the, the, the others who would like to know something about it would go to him because they know he has the information. Let's ask him, discuss it and so on. And then I would say this coalition, which is supporting the structural reform is actually broadening. And then the, the, the ones who would be against it, uh, in the end become just, I would say, uh, lonely shooters. I mean, there were just a few, 
And uh, if you can actually win uh, via a good debate, that they see that you have uh, sound proof on what you're doing, uh, this is actually the best, the best uh, what you can hope for. for. Thank you very much, Dylan. Uh, I really hope that uh, your experience and your insight will help our audience also uh, this invaluable experience to prepare uh, the next uh, structural reforms and to prepare the next uh, ERP. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sasha.